Hi, and welcome to the Packer TV. I'm Dean Cooper. And I'm Tamara Ferlansky. Together, we have all your industry news. Tamara, it is very nice to have you back this week. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank it's you. It's always, always a pleasure. Thanks. Well, you know what? I'm glad to be back here, not only with you, but on the Packer TV. Now, we have a lot of news to get to today, so here's what's on the show. Target boosts fresh products. Walmart sets its sights on expansion. And we have your Kiwi Fruit Outlook. Target Corp is planning to increase expansion into fresh produce and other groceries, reports business editor Bruce Blythe. He says the company is adding pea fresh food departments to about half of its U.S. stores by the end of next year. Target CFO Douglas Scovanner says the Minneapolis-based discount chain expects to have pea fresh departments in about 850 stores by the end of 2011. While traditional Target locations carry no perishable items, the pea fresh stores sell fresh produce including bananas, seasonal fruit, berries, bagged salads and baby carrots. In August, Target said it had pea fresh departments at more than 300 U.S. locations after remodeling more than 200 stores so far this year. Meanwhile, Bruce Blythe also says Walmart plans to step up expansion efforts in large U.S. cities, adding smaller format neighborhood stores offering fresh foods to prop up sagging sales. Bill Simon, CEO of Walmart's U.S. operations, says the retailer must be more creative with its store formats as the company expands beyond rural and suburban areas into denser urban markets. The company plans to have a healthy mix of super centers and smaller stores, including grocery and neighborhood market formats. A Walmart spokesperson declined to name cities where the company might build or what types of stores are planned. But the Associated Press says over the summer, Walmart scouted locations in New York City, San Francisco and other cities. With a closer look at the Center for Produce Safety Grants, here's Packer staff writer Mike Hornick. New research grants awarded by the Center for Produce Safety target the food safety questions that growers themselves want answered first. The Center recently funded 17 projects worth $2.8 million. That money matches funds from growers and commodity boards hoping to fill gaps in today's food safety knowledge. Some current guidelines are based on educated guesses. For example, on the best size for a buffer zone between crops and a composting site. Tim York, president of Marcon Cooperative and chair of the Center's advisory board, told me advances in science on this and many other questions will reassure both growers and consumers. This is Mike Hornick for the Packer TV. At the recent Southeast Produce Council fall meeting, traceability was top of mind. Doug Olmeyer tells us more. I'm Doug Olmeyer in Savannah, Georgia at the Southeast Produce Council's fall conference. This year's conference is attracting record attendance. Almost 300 people, food service buyers and retail buyers, have come to Savannah to attend the conference, which has higher attendance than last year's, which marked the organization's 10th birthday. It's looking like kiwi fruit will enter a strong market this season. Markets editor Andy Nelson gives us the full report. Take it away, Andy. Outstanding growing conditions should yield a big crop of California kiwi fruit this season. About 6.5 million trays are expected with a start date of October 4, right on time, said Chris Zanaboni of the California Kiwi Fruit Commission. Growers also are excited about the larger size profile of this year's crop. Donna Fagundis of Cal Harvest Marketing Inc. said big sizes will benefit the whole industry. More good news for growers. Prices are up. Containers of New Zealand kiwi fruit were selling for $21 at the end of September, up from 17 last year and growers expect continued strong markets for California fruit. For the Packer TV, this is Markets Editor Andy Nelson. Finally today, we hear from Ashley Bentley. She had the chance to take an insightful tour in the heart of Georgia peanut country. Recently, I got to see some of the changes taking place in the supply chain for the workhorse of the nut and legume industry. Of course, I'm talking about the peanut. As part of a National Peanut Board sponsored media tour through Georgia, I, along with reporters from CNN, Southern Living, and Flavor in the Menu magazines, toured peanut fields, packing houses, and processing plants. 
Although peanut demand quickly bounced back following the salmonella outbreak of 2009, margins on peanuts are dwindling with more food safety regulations and barriers from schools and institutions that block the snack due to allergy concerns. In shell peanuts, including those found on produce department shelves and in food service at sporting events, make up 7% of the market. This is Ashley Bentley for the Packer TV. Thanks for that report, Ashley. And thank you for watching today. Now, if you've got a story you want to see the Packer TV cover, let us know by commenting below. And have a great week. We'll see you next time.